السلام علیکم تمام ممبرز آف پاکستانی زین الین میرا نام ہے زہیب نبی اور ہمیشہ کی طرح ویکینڈ پہ میں ایک ایسے پاکستانی کے ساتھ آپ کے پاس آیا ہوں جنہوں نے بہت بے پناہ قدر خدمات سر انجام دیے پاکستانیوں کے لیے دبئی کے اندر کووڈ کے دنوں میں اور مزے کی بات ہے کہ یہ شخص کوئی اڈھیر عمر بزنس مین نہیں ہے کوئی بہت امیر مطلب کہ آپ سمجھ لیں جن کی آرگنائزیشن چل رہی ہیں بلکہ وہ ایک چودہ سال کے بچے ہیں اور آپ نے ان کے بارے میں نیوز میں گلف نیوز میں میں نے خیر گروپ کے اندر لنک بھی شیئر کیا تھا آپ نے لازمی پڑھا ہوگا تو بغیر کوئی وقت ضائع کیے بغیر میں آپ کو انٹروڈیوس کرانا چاہتا ہوں میرے موزد مہمان دا گریٹ کٹ ہو ہیز ڈن اے لاٹ مسٹر حیدر علی السلام علیکم حیدر ہاؤ یو ایم فائن تھینک یو ہاؤ یو ایم فائن تھینک یو حیدر فورٹین ایئرس جسٹ فورٹین ایئرس رائٹ How you did it? Um, how did I do it? Can you be a little bit more specific? <laughs> See, the kids at 14, they hardly care about, you know, people, things going around them. They are more worried about getting the new, new next gadget, forcing their parents to get some money out of that and, you know, all these kind of things. But you really, your thought process was totally different. You went towards, like, I remember the news clipping, which I read on Gulf News, that you saw the uh, queue of people standing in front of Danata office, and they were all hoping to get the tickets to go back to Pakistan, but they don't have any money to pay. And this is where everything changed in your mind. So what was the thought process? What made you feel that? And how you thought to do it? So I feel that like living in the UAE, I think, I'm not sure if it's true across the board, but living here, it's just kind of, we live a life of privilege. So sometimes it's kind of hard to understand that people here don't live such privileged lives, um, especially in the case of Pakistanis, Indians, those kind of people from uh, South Asia. So I, I like, I was always aware of these people being here. However, it wasn't until I actually saw it happening that I felt inclined to make a change. And it's not for me, it's for them, kind of like, I was just kind of so shocked that I had to take action to do something, you know, I had to do something um, to combat the situation they were in. Caught your point, Heather. So anyways, Heather, like, um, definitely I shoot a question straight away to you instead of going uh, for your introduction. Can you introduce yourself to the my, co uh, my colleagues and the fellow group members here as well? So, well, so I am uh, Heather Ali. I'm, I live in Dubai. I'm from Karachi. Um, I'm 14. I study in Dubai College. I mean, that's really what you have to know about me. Oh, that's great. Uh, those who don't know, uh, Heather Ali is also now an ambassador to Pakistan School and have been appointed by school administration and uh, our counselor journal in Dubai. So Heather, how do you feel about that? I think it's actually a very, it's like an excellent opportunity. Again, going back to the whole privilege thing. Um, some people don't understand. Um, again, I, I live, uh, sorry, I don't live. Uh, I go to school at Dubai College, which is a premier school in Dubai. So normally you don't really realize, again, how some schools can be quite destitute in Dubai as well, com like compared to other schools, they're nowhere near as good. Um, I thought it, I think it's just an excellent opportunity having somebody who has who knows people like from these bit bigger better schools um, to help improve the situation of these Pakistani schools. So I think it's actually a very good opportunity. I think it, it'll be a good a good way to help out. Um, that's great, Heather. And uh, did you visit Pakistan School recently, or have you started on your work or anything with them? Um, I've started a little bit. I went to the opening of the multi-purpose field uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, I haven't been as recently. Um, I haven't been um, for the past couple of weeks. I mean, there's a lot of school work and the whole COVID situation has made it difficult. So I hope to go back when um, kind of COVID is kind of slowing down a little bit, maybe in the holidays uh, in December. Got your point. So Heather, definitely, you know, to give away this such kind of money, you might have lost some of your gadgets which you were planning to buy in your future. Uh, so how you find the support, especially from your parents? Because uh, I will say that definitely they played a very vital role in your upbringing that you that made you to think in this way. So how you relate it? 
So I think my parents raised me in a way where they they didn't like even though we live in Dubai in, in a privileged lifestyle, they didn't raise me in a way in which I took that all for granted. So um, they raised me in a way where I have to think about other people. And obviously, sometimes you forget that living here, it's kind of you're kind of blinded by all the like dazzling glamour of Dubai. You need to get down to earth, you know, like understand how people around you live. So I think my parents did a very good job in raising me that way. No, that's great, Heather. So Heather, to collect this huge amount of money, which is like 75,000 dirhams, uh, it's worth a car you might have secured for your future sometime with your parents. So how you manage it? Like, uh, did your parents uh, give you most of the donation or you find some uncle and aunts around and how it was, how was the journey? <laughs> well, funny enough, it wasn't just my parents. Um, I started originally, they, they were always supportive. However, they would ne never have thought to that I would have done this much. I mean, in Dubai, we have such a gi uh, giant community of Pakistanis. So it's um, it was interesting to see how much they contributed to this cause. It was very heartening. I mean, just like through friends, family, um, as far away as Hong Kong and San Francisco, they, there was lots of help. So I think that played a quite an essential role in this uh, fundraising project. That's pretty cool, Heather. So Heather, you know, uh, collecting charity is sometimes considered illegal in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. So how you manage this uh, legality part or the technical parts which revolves around the legality of collecting charity in United Arab Emirates? So um, originally there was this idea by my father's colleague at work so um, we wanted to help out in whatever way that we could. However, we were unsure regarding the UAE's laws on charity to, uh, char fundraising. So we went to the uh, consul generals, um, the consulate in Dubai, and we met the consul general. And he said that although the consulate's not able to um, receive donations, like process money, you can fundraise money as much as you want. However, you can use that money to donate tickets. So you, can, you buy them yourself. Um, the concert gives you a list of people. You buy the tickets yourself and you distribute them. So the money is not going through the consulate. It's kind of your responsibility to, uh, dis, uh, to buy the tickets and do everything like that. That's great. So Heather, did you actually met the people whom you bought the tickets or you found it uh, through some third party source? And how was the feeling when you knew that you were able to help so many people or the family? So, um, I mean, this whole donation thing involved going to the PIA office in Dara several times. So uh, the consulate uh, staff had made a list for me of all the people um, that needed to go back, where they needed to go, uh, passport numbers, phone numbers, et cetera, et cetera. So they'd given me that. So we got the tickets and I would distribute them a couple of days later. So I I actually really enjoyed it. I mean, these people were obviously in such a d destitute situation that helping them was very nice. It, it just felt very wholesome. I, I felt good. I'm sure they felt nice as well. Being able to go back to Pakistan is a big deal. Um, some people don't go back for a long time. So I think it's very good that um, I felt good. I hope those people did as well. That's great, Heather. So Heather, uh, are you continuing your efforts or you stop what you have done or you're uh, still planning to do some, you have some future plans in terms of charity, helping the poor people or all these kind of things? So this, um, this part is over. However, now the focus is on the Pakistani school. So um, it, uh, the rating by the KHJ of that school used to be unacceptable. So what that school is trying to do now, I mean, now they've started to get a favorable favorable reputation by the KHDA. They're um, due to COVID and the social distancing, they're apparently doing quite well. Um, so now they've placed a push on textbooks. So originally they um, only offered the Pakistani metric system. And now if the KHDA rating goes to good, they'll be able to offer GCSE which will give the students there a much uh, brighter future because GCSE is more widely credited around the world. So um, that's kind of the new push. I'm, um, there was uh, 
there was this woman from uh, who I met with at the consulate who started this book drive where she was collecting books for um, the, the school. Um, there was one other boy who collected some textbooks from his old school and donated them. So I think now the big push is to try and collect textbooks. I'm doing that at my school, Dubai College, and I'm trying to find even old kind of uh, old textbooks that don't really fit the current exam specifications. Anything helps um, at schools like this where they don't have the proper facilities or the um, resources available. So that's the main push now. That's great, uh, Heather. Uh, I will say that really, uh, you really have a good plans ahead. So Heather, you have done any charity in the past as well, or this was your very first experience which changed everything for you and now you are turning into a very different Heather which you used to be before? I mean, I've always felt kind of inclined to help poor people, but I've never done anything of this magnitude. I mean, there's obviously the odd, you know, um, going to Pakistan, trying to help people at like maybe Dar al Sukun, that charity in Pakistan, um, but never anything of this mag magnitude. I mean, I was always, but this, I mean, this project has kind of changed my life. I mean, in Ramadan, for example, I would go and distribute food at labor camps for iftar. I mean, but that was always of a small scale, you know, this didn't really, I mean, it was a good thing to do. However, it wasn't of a large scale. A lot of people were doing it. I feel like this part it allowed me to um, find my feet as a philanthropist and it gave me a sense of independence and I enjoyed it. That's great, Heather. Mm, so Heather, still you're 14. So what are your pastimes except uh, thinking about all these stuff? What you do <laughs> in, your, in your, yeah. I mean, GCSEs are kind of keeping me on my toes at the moment, so lots of homework. Um, I am quite musically inclined. I like reading, I played the piano, and I play the saxophone. Um, but other than that, it's just kind of nothing really happening <laughs> for me. That's great, Heather. So Heather, when you came to know that the uh, Pakistan Consulate uh, is thinking to acknowledge your efforts and they called you for the certificate of appreciation, what was your feeling like um, you were really excited, happy, or you think uh, you think that this will be something which will push others to do this as well? How you take it? I think, I mean, I originally didn't know that there would be such a big uh, media covering when I went to the consul uh, general um, that, that day in August. Um, but I feel like this is an excellent opportunity for people to get involved. Um, I know that going back to the whole privilege thing, I know a lot of kids my age don't do stuff like this. So hopefully with this kind of platform, this charity work has given me, uh, well, not even given me, like this kind of, by getting um, on th onto the news, Gulf news, etc. I think it's uh, a driving force for other people to um, start to collect money and donate it and do other uh, charitable acts, which is very good. I mean, I've heard of these two boys who collected some money for a school in Fajera as well. Um, so I think my efforts are kind of pushing more people to do philanthropic works, uh, philanthropic, philanthropic um, things, which I think is very good, very beneficial for our society today. That's great, Heather. But Heather, uh, don't you think that uh, there's lo now a lot of responsibility on your shoulder, which you never had before? Like you were a free man, do anything. Now you have some intention. You have been. Uh, nominated as an ambassador to Pakistan School and all those things. So you might not be able to do the things as you used to do before. So you need to be act more responsibly, even on social media or everywhere you roam around because you have certain, you know, position or certain responsibilities on top of you. How you take it? I mean, it comes with growing up. I mean, everybody has to face some kind of responsibility in their life. And I think I kind of needed it. Um, now I'm with this whole ambassador thing, I can maybe manage my time more effectively. I think it's beneficial for me to have some responsibility so I can understand what it, I can just kind of understand adult life. I think it's good. Um, I don't really mind about having responsibility for me, but I think it's uh, something that you need to kind of uh, do well in life. That's great, Heather. And how's the reaction of your parents? 
especially mom because usually sometimes mothers they get you know a bit uh, worried that uh, my children is getting a limelight and he might not lose uh, his track or he might uh, just get into these things and he will leave his career or, you know all these kind of worries usually moms are the first one who object on these things that's what i always face with my mother and let me admit it openly but uh, is there anything where they're still happy and they're pushing or, or they're telling you to balance around or something no, I think it's, um, they've been extremely supportive, actually. At first, obviously, they didn't expect something of this, mag uh, they didn't expect me to pull off something um, of this magnitude. But um, I think that they're extremely open to it. I mean, you can't really object when your child is doing charity. I don't think there's a problem with that, obviously. So I think they've just been very uh, supportive throughout. And it's been very beneficial for me. It's been, it's, um, it's enabled me to do well, to keep sane during this whole process. That's great, that's great, Heather. So Heather, as you're saying that the Pakistan school is moving towards GCSC and all those things. So where do you think that you can play a role in improving them or you can help them in changing things? I mean, coming from a school that offers GCSC, I think it's just my key role can be um, being able to help the transition to GCSE, um, firstly by providing textbooks and B, um, the Consul General said I can have friends there to try and help out with the children. I have some Pakistani friends at my school. I think it's a good idea to, um, since I do GCSE, like I'm working towards GCSE, GCSE exams now, I think that school kind of needs some people who understand how the system works. Um, so I think that's kind of my main role. I might not be good at sports, but I can um, help out with the academics. That's great. That's great, Heather. One question came, like, how many people actually donated towards your cause, which uh, helped you to get all this money? I'm not sure of the exact number. I think maybe, I'm actually not sure of the exact number, but everybody was very generous. Um, Everybody was very generous and um, very supportive. Um, I know that we were able to send back around 75 people um, back to Pakistan, uh, Karachi, Lahore, Sambad, all those places. Well, that's a huge number, 75. Yeah. You you're really made a difference, uh, Heather. I, I must say that we are all are proud of you for that. Thank you. So Heather, leaving away all this charity and stuff, so how you spend your you know, journal day? Like, um, it's more about games, it's more about studies, it's more about video games and stuff. How you pass a day in journal? Or pass a week in journal, which we can make it yeah. more generic. I mean, I read quite a lot. Um, obviously, there's the whole social aspect. I mean, I can't really do much of that now because of uh, the whole COVID situation. Um, but I think I, I kind of just spend my days kind of studying, playing the piano, um, nothing really uh, it, too exciting going on. Uh, but I think it's nice to have a routine in life. That's great, Heather. Uh, Heather, I really um, appreciate your time. And in then, do you want to give any message to all the community members who are there who are listening to you from the Pakistanis in Alain community? Just to introduce you ourself, like Pakistanis, in, 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 there are a huge number of Pakistanis in Alain, but we are not lucky enough like Dubai, where we have our own organizations like PAD, Pakistan Association Dubai. We don't have any consulate office here. And there was not uh, any central place where we can collect and connect with each other. So we took an advantage of a digital age and one of our colleagues, Mr. Asif, formed this group and there we connected all the Pakistanis living in Alain together. So it helped the community in a way that we are able to, you know, help each other in their problems, understand each other's problems, guide them, consult them. These are the things which we are doing online nowadays. So do you want to give any message to them? And uh, before giving a message to them, in fact, one very important question I forgot to ask you. Have you been anyways associated with Pakistan Association Dubai or you're planning to get associated with them? Because they are the, one of the only organizations in UAE who are usually able to collect charities and stuff legally in United Arab Emirates. Have you ever thought over that? Uh, actually, no, I haven't thought of it until you just said it. Um, oh. I'm actually not familiar with that group. So um, maybe in the future we'll be able to get affiliated. But um, one thing that I can say to everybody, I mean, any Pakistani, just be, be kind, you know? I mean, 
especially living in this world, living at this time, um, even during the COVID-19 pandemic, um, there, there's so much that needs to be done, um, but there are not enough people that are helping. So I think just my main message is just be nice, just be helpful, try to do charitable acts as they come. I mean, there may not be such a big community in Elaine, but um, there, there's a large amount of people and I think that's um, that can do good for the community. Just kind of help each other and hopefully it will get better, I guess. That's great, Heather. Thanks a lot for your time. We really appreciate your time. Um, have a nice evening and enjoy the rest of your time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody in Pakistan is Elaine. Thanks a lot for watching us. Uh, we had Mr. Heather with us and he is one of the amazing guests I ever had. And just like, uh, let me be very honest, uh, I really felt a little bit of, you know, uh, you can, I won't say the word jealous is the right word, but a little bit, uh, you know, I feel that I, I'm here, I'm 34. I cannot even think or do near to what Heather did. So this is something which I really need to learn from Heather and do all those things in a better way. Thank you very much. Good evening all. Take care. Bye-bye.